you ready? Blue house holds both alike and dignity. And fair Verona, where we lay our seed. And ancient grudge break to the mutiny. Where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. From forth the bit of mighty beast who blows. A pair of star-crossed lovers takes a breath. Will meet the venture bees over those do their death and bury their dead man. In fearful passage of their death mark love and the continuance of their parents' rage, which with their children's end could not remove is now the two hours traffic of our stage. What here shall miss, our, our soil shall, shall strive to win. I see Queen Mab hath been with you. She is the fairy's midwife, and she comes in shape no bigger than an agate stone. Her chariot is an empty hazelnut, drawn with a team of little atoms, athwart men's noses as they lie asleep. And in this state, she gallops night by night through lovers' brains, and then they dream of love. Or lawyers' fingers who stray dreamt on fees. Or ladies' lips who stray on kisses' dreams, which off the angry mab with blisters plagues, because their breaths with sweet meats tainted are. Sometimes she driveth through a soldier's neck, and then dreams of cutting foreign throats, of breeches and moscato Spanish blades, of hell's fire fathom deep, and then an drums in his ear, at which he starts and wakes. This is she. He just has scars that never felt the wound. Like 300 window breaks. It is the East, and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon, who is already sick and pale with grief, that thou her make art far more fair than she. It is my lady. Oh, it is my love. Unless she knew she were. She speaks. She says nothing. What of that? Two of the fairest stars in all the heaven, happy some business do and treat her eyes to twinkle in their spirits that they return. What if her eyes were there? They in her head. The brightness of her cheeks with shame, no stars, as they light off the limp. Her eye in heaven, for through her every reach of stream so bright. That birds were seen and think it were not night. See how she leans her cheek upon her hand? Oh, if I was that glove upon thy hand, I might touch thy cheek. I me. She speaks. Oh, speak again, bright angel. Oh, Romeo. Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name. Or if thou wilt not be but sworn my love, I'll no longer be a Capulet. Shall I hear more? Or shall I speak at this? Tis but thy name that is my enemy. Thou art thyself, though not a Montague. What's Montague? It is nor hand, nor foot, nor arm, nor face, nor any other part belonging to a man. Oh, be some other name. What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. So Romeo would, were he not Romeo called, retain that dear perfection which he owes without that title. Romeo, doff thy name, and for that name which is no part of thee, take all myself. Show people. 
born to the same nature rule for all of the kinder captain aside. And Romeo, and Romeo by my mother sh shall know our drill. And hither shall he come, he and I will watch thy awakening that very night. Shall Romeo bear thee hence to Mantua? Where be these enemies, Capulets, Montagues? See what scourge is laid upon your hate. That heaven finds means and ways to kill your joys with love. A gloomy peace this morning with it brings. The sun for sorrow will not shew its head. Go hence and have more talk of these sad things. For is there never a story more woe than this of her Juliet?